What is up, Prackies? Welcome to Prack Teacher 101. It's Liam D. Elysium's here. In this episode, we are talking about lesson planning and actually preparing for your lessons. Probably one of the number one things Prack teachers worry about before going out on their practical experience. That's coming up right now. Hello, thank you for watching and welcome to Prac E, an online resource made by teachers for teachers. In this episode, we are talking about lesson planning and actually preparing for your lessons before you go out on practical experience. But before I keep going, remember to hit that subscribe down below, support Prac E, support Prac teachers and support education and to keep seeing videos just like this one. Now I'm gonna start off this video by saying something that you're probably not here to, <laughs> to listen to and that is I don't have all the answers. Especially with lesson planning, it's very difficult to say that there's some magical formula that is just gonna you know, make the perfect lessons every single time. I've heard teachers of 30 years, 40 years experience say they still do not have the answer. But there are some tools that you can add to your toolkit. There are some bricks that you can lay your foundation on that will give you the best chance to, su to succeed with your lessons and also with your planning and your research. One key thing that we'll be talking about in this video is the idea of momentum. Now with momentum, you don't want it to be too slow, but you also don't want it to be too fast. And this really comes down to your planning. One big mistake that I've made myself and a lot of practice students make is over planning. Now this can happen a lot with university when they almost expect you to do a minute by minute synopsis of your entire lesson. You know, they want an introduction, they want a body, they want a conclusion, they want an activity, and you write maybe a two page you know, explanation of what you're doing. This can be good because it can make you feel like you have a, a strong foundation with your lesson, but also can be bad because what a lot of teachers I've found do is treat it like a Bible and they know that they can't differ from this at all. And that's where a lot of mistakes come from. Because what happens is that you're not giving yourself wiggle room. What is better is to have a bare bone skeleton going throughout your lesson, which allows you to extend things or to cut things short based on what you're seeing. And this is why it's so important to have just a skeleton. Because what if you've planned an entire activity to be 20 minutes and the kids aren't getting into it, they're not enjoying it, and it's only been five minutes? Are you gonna keep pushing them for 15 minutes? Or are you gonna cut it short and move on to something else? I would say do the latter. From what I've seen on my own, I've done this myself. I've tried to, I go, no, I planned to do this. I planned all night last night, this activity. You gotta bloody do it well because it took me so long to plan. It took me so long to print and laminate these resources. Please enjoy it. And they're just not getting it. You need to be humble enough to be able to cut your plan short and to be able to recognize that what you're doing isn't working. In the same token, if you've planned a throwaway activity, maybe to just whet the appetite of the students, it's only planned to be able to be going maybe two minutes, five minutes, and they're absolutely loving it, there's no reason why you can just keep pushing that and maybe push it to 10, even 15 minutes, maybe even a whole lesson. But sometimes nothing's gonna work. You've planned it all day, all night, you actually come to the lesson and the kids hate its cuts. And I'll talk about this right now with the experience that I had on my first practicum. So we're talking about the ability to improvise within the classroom. The number one time that that happened to me was actually on my first prac and it was the first lesson that I actually was supposed to teach. Well, saying that I was actually supposed to teach it, I was actually supposed to be there just to observe. But I came in and my teacher, my mentor teacher of that day was away sick. And I went into the class, which was a rabble, I think it was on a Friday afternoon, and that kids are naturally just going off their heads at that stage. So I thought, oh boy, here we go. But then I saw we had a substitute, which doubled that feeling. And then I found out that he was Polish. And that's not necessarily a problem, but what the problem was is his English wasn't so fantastic. Like for instance, he called me Mr. Liam the whole time, so he didn't know what Mr. went. So when dealing with you know 20 to 25 kids from a lower socioeconomic area, a lot of them had behavioural issues. It was really difficult to you know keep them under control at the best of times. So I had a substitute. I had a 
uh, Friday afternoon class. So I was just observing, so I thought, here we go. But then he came in, he said, your teacher? And kind of this really thick accent. And I said, yes, but I'm not actually their teacher. I'm just here on prac. I'm a prac teacher. I'm, an ob you know, I'm observing. But because of that language barrier, he didn't understand that. So he went, oh, and just handed me all the materials and just went, oh, okay, you take the class then. And before I could say anything, he turned around and walked out. And all the kids were just like looking at each other going, oh, great, now we get to, we get to muck around all lesson. And I was given the, the resources, I didn't know what we were doing, what even they were looking at. This was like my second day at the, at the school. So I had no idea what was going on. I looked at it and they were doing their, their speech, they were doing public speaking. So they were going through their speech, they had like a, a format thing where they had to go through one by one and kind of build it up from nothing. Um, and they had a sheet to fill out, so I thought, okay. And at that moment I had noise buzzing around my ears, they were screaming already up out of their chairs and I'd just been left for dead completely out in this situation. And I'll spare you the details, but I managed to just claw my way to the finish line and there was about half an hour to go and I was checking my watch because I'd done everything we needed to do and the activity wasn't really that massive, but I just chunked it down so we did each bit separately, bit by bit, slowly, slowly, and I just clawed my way, bleeding from the fingers all the way down to the finish line to that bell and when that bell sounded, it was... <laughs> One of the most relieving sounds I've ever heard in my life. So as a teacher, you're going to get these situations where you're just going to be chucked into a situation where you're not going to have time to prepare or some substitutes is going to give you the resources and piss off. And it's up to you then to take that class and try and make something out of it. At that same school that I was at where that story happened, I actually heard a teacher and he said, look, some days when I was first starting out, I had some lessons where I just sat there for 20, 30 minutes and just let the kids run wild. Obviously not something ridiculous, but just let them run wild for the next 20 minutes and just wait for that bell because he knew there was nothing saving him that day from those kids being a complete rabble. And it's hard to say, but sometimes you have to accept that as a teacher, that no matter what you're gonna do that lesson, it's not gonna work. You need to be able to take that hit and keep going. Talking about taking that hit, here's one practical piece of advice for when the class you feel are going completely out of control and that is what we call the clinch activity. We've actually got some boxing gloves right here. So remember that, the boxing analogy, it's called the clinch activity. And basically what it means, what I mean by clinch is like just in boxing, it, you feel like you're losing control, your opponent's getting all over you. So you hold on, you clinch, you regain control. And that's the exact same thing that I'm talking about with your lessons. You need to be able to have some worst case scenario activities for when the kids are getting unruly and you feel like you're getting out of control. Now what I mean by clinch are basic activities that keeps one, the kids occupied, two, expels some of their energy, and three, gives you time to plan ahead, to be able to survey the scene and be able to plan what you're gonna do next. It's hard to give you some, you know, it's hard to give you some lists of some of these activities because like I was saying, you have to read the room and be able to apply it to your own topic area and also what the kids are like that day. But one thing that I've done in the past when I needed a clinch was discussion questions. It's easy, you get the kids in little groups, you put up like five or six discussion questions about the topic that they're talking about and you say, all right kids, get in your discussion groups, answer these questions, write a few lines um, and then at the end we'll have a discussion about what we're talking about gets the kids in groups, gets them talking, might expel some of the energy, and also gets their attention off of you, which will give you maybe five or 10 minutes to survey the room and then come up with something that's gonna happen next. This actually happened because I'd planned an entire lesson around ICT and the projector wasn't working, the internet was down, it was just a complete disaster. So I had to come up with a way to get what was out on my PowerPoint into kind of like a verbal form in front of my class and be able to transport the medium of what I was trying to talk about into a completely different one in a few seconds while the kids were preoccupied with something else. So in conclusion, we've got some concluding pointers for you for the practical advice. Be humble with your lesson planning. I cannot stress this enough. Do not plan minute by minute 
but plan overall chunks like a skeleton. This gives you wiggle room left or right of your activities to be able to extend things or cut things short. You need to be able to clinch for 10 or 15 minutes and be able to analyze what's going on and be able to see forward. That's actually, that's actually some practical advice that I got from my last mentor and has helped me personally massively. That is all. Thank you so much for watching Prac Teacher 101. My name has been Liam D. or Lysiums. Before you go, remember to share. Share this content if you found it helpful with a fellow Prac student or a university student. Question for you, what is some of the best planned lessons that you've seen personally, whether at school or on practicum? Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.